All right, so here we go. Here we go, the main event, if you will. I'm super excited to introduce you guys to Michelle. So, <clears throat> Michelle Gabadia is the Associate Dean of Students at UNCC. And she's also an outspoken advocate for the way the world really should work. She spends her days as a higher ed professional who has dedicated her professional life to changing every student she encounters to try harder and do better. She advises thousands of fraternity men and sorority women as UNCC, uh, at UNCC and works with college students across the country to help them make good choices and get rid of their, the dipshittery in their lives. <laughs> Michelle is going to visit every continent by the time she's 40. Tells you a little bit about her. Uh, she's hit five so far, including South America last week, you know, as one does, uh, when she battled piranha and nature in Ecuador. In 2017, she was awarded the National Anti-Hazing Hero Award, and she spends most of her days being a badass black woman. She is so cool, and so here to speak to us on our global theme of anxiety, please welcome to the stage the fearless and Charlotte's own Michelle Gobadia. Come on up, Michelle. Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Good morning. How are you? I'm not scared. <laughs> not at all. I don't know who that person was in the intro. She sounds amazing. <laughs> and if you meet her, I'd be like, what's up? So this morning, we're going to talk about anxiety. Hmm. Close your eyes. Think about all the things that bring you anxiety. Let's bring them to the surface. Let's explore, shall we? Think about the, the people that bring you anxiety, the places the situations, the instances. Some of you are like, I need therapy right now. Yes, I know. <laughs> this is our therapy. We're going to do this this morning. Think about all of those things. Think about what are the daily anxiety points that you face every single day. And I want you to think about how do you react to them? What do you do with that energy? What do you do with anxiety? Open your eyes. You realize that anxiety is an internal force, right? It starts from within. It is literally self-sabotage, is it not? It is the voice inside of you saying, we shouldn't do this. You are unable. You are ill-equipped. No one will like it. It deters, does it not? It distracts. It deconstructs. It limits. It prevents us from being great. But it starts internally. It's an internal place that says we can't. Now, there are external forces that deal with anxiety. Like, I'm a black woman. <laughs> There's anxiety everywhere. <laughs> we'll get to that. So there are external forces that may interject themselves into your life and maybe co-sign the anxiety, but it really starts internally. And the way you react to it is how your life progresses forward. They say that life is not what happens to you, it's how you react to it. Anxiety is the catalyst in that. Anxiety is either pushes you forward, keeps you in place, or pushes you back. There are four things in my life on a daily basis that causes anxiety. The first maybe some of y'all can relate, is dating. <laughs> Single people, where you at? Raise your hand. My people, hello, how are you? One, we are going to make it. They say there's someone for everyone. Maybe you're here, do you like what you see? <sighs> for those of you who are partnered, married, happily or unhappily, <laughs> With someone forever, it's a Sedman Oprah thing, whatever. The dating game is hard. <laughs> it is hard out here for a pimp. And the anxiety that it induces is epic. This is my Bumble profile. <laughs> now, there are many dating applications that you can choose. I personally use the Bumble. 
because the, the power is in my hands. As the female, I have 24 hours to respond after we match. So I get to make the first move. Look at that. Very forward thinking. But there is anxiety that comes with that. Because I have placed barriers in my, in my way, subconsciously and consciously. If you actually read my profile, it says, <laughs> I'm an easygoing and I value honesty. This will sound mean, but if you can't meet or exceed me financially, you better be super secure with what you got and be okay with what I make. I like to cook, work out, travel, and try new things. No kids and never married. What else do you want to know? Instagram, at MG Speaks Up. <laughs> there are a couple of places where I have placed anxiety in that. One, I'm easygoing and value honesty. Why? Because I need to know what you're thinking. Because anxiety propels me to think that you're thinking things about me, and if you don't tell me, I will just make up a narrative in my head, and that will be what we concentrate on. So I have to value honesty. Last year, 2017, was the year of, I'm going to say what I want instead of beating around the bush. Because not saying what I wanted created an anxiety in my life and I wasn't forthcoming and I wasn't truthful and I made excuses for things in my life because I was afraid to tell people what I really meant. So I was tired of meeting men who were like, well, I'm unemployed currently, I'm being a man of leisure. <laughs> And I was like, bro, listen, I got seven continents to get to. Either you got frequent flyer miles or not. <laughs> so that's why I put in my profile, hey, you better be okay with what you make and be okay with what I make and we're gonna fly the world. But I do recognize that I have limited myself. Maybe my anxiety of saying exactly what I need and want is closing me off to the man of my dreams who is very secure with what he wants and he's happy to fly on my pass and I'm happy to take him. Dating is hard. The narrative that I write internally about who I am and what I need to receive is limiting and freeing all at the same time. This is a source of anxiety for me because I don't know if I will walk the planet alone. I don't know if I will be pleasantly partnered in the future, and I don't know what people see when they look at me. Am I? capable of being loved? Am I lovable? Yes, Thank you. <laughs> but the anxiety that that builds sometimes scares me to a place where I just rather sit on the couch with the dog because it's safer there. The second thing, the second thing that causes anxiety in my life is work. <laughs> I am the Associate Dean of Students and the Director of Fraternity and Sorority Life <laughs> at UNC Charlotte. And that is my professional headshot. That's the, you're in trouble, sit down, look. <laughs> Me, along with my Associate Director and Assistant Director who are actually here in the back of the room, which is hilarious because who's at our office? Uh, <laughs> who is minding the asylum? <laughs> You laugh, but it's like so true. <laughs> we are in charge of 2,100 18 to 22 year olds who want to join fraternities and sororities. Now the sororities, any sorority women out there, shout out to sorority women, you are great people, thank you, thank you. Are there any fraternity men out there? Yeah, you're great people too, but recently you have lost your shit. <laughs> it is a stress induced, field, it is high anxiety, not because of my actions, but because of theirs. We spend day and night educating students on like, be good to each other. Risk management is a real thing. Liability insurance is a real thing. Giving pledges boiled beer is not a good idea. <laughs> and yet we need to go to sleep and pray and hope that we have done right and they have listened. Have you spoken to an 18 to 22 year old recently? <laughs> they don't listen. <laughs> like ever. I'm like, did you hear what I said? They're like, mm-hmm, what did I say? I wasn't paying attention, Michelle. <laughs> but my Snapchat is popping. <laughs> 
So work produces that anxiety because I have told parents that I will take care of their children, that I would watch over them, that I would make sure they knew the values and the morals and the tenets of their organization, and they would actually put that to good use. And yet I suspended three fraternities last year for behavior that was not conducive or in line with what it meant to be a strong fraternity man or a sorority woman. The anxiety that I have every day that we might kill someone and I will have to pick up the phone and call a parent and be like, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I apologize, but something has happened. That level of anxiety keeps me on edge and fearful. And sometimes I don't even tell people what I do for a living because that judgment of like, oh, you teach frat guys how to do keg stands, <laughs> keeps me from the truth of I inspire men and women to be better than they were yesterday and even better tomorrow. Hashtag we make leaders. But anxiety gets in the way of that. And sometimes I do want to retreat and curl up and not execute to what I know I could possibly do in their lives. The third thing that causes anxiety in my life is race, is race. Race is something I am painfully aware of all the time. Why? Because my melanin is deep. <laughs> it is chocolate. I know I walked up here and some of you want to lick my face. <laughs> we can discuss at a later time. <laughs> I'm into that. <laughs> but a lot has happened in the world in the last couple of years and a lot has happened here in Charlotte, right? So. There is almost nowhere I go and no situation that I'm in that I am not aware of who I am and how I present in the room and that I'm black. In fact, I put a picture of Steve Whitby, one of your own, up because I never feel more black than when I'm standing next to him. Because he's one of the whitest people I know. I love him, he's my boy. But I'm like, damn, you pale. We gotta get you some sun, something. We were afraid the flash wasn't gonna show up. Like, who does the camera focus on? It's so hard to balance. But being aware of race and who you are, and because of the times we live in, I question everyone. And I look at everyone, and I make up that narrative in my head, and anxiety feeds that. Who are you? Do you have the best intentions for me? Who did you vote for? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, white women, I've been looking at y'all crazy for a year. Like, we were going together. What happened? But there is real anxiety when I enter new spaces. Even when I came here this morning, I'm like, let us count how many black people come. Just want to make sure my people are here. Shout out to the black people who came. But the fact that I walk the earth with the anxiety of what people think of me and what they interpret of me because of how my skin looks and how my hair is done, that anxiety is almost retarding. It keeps me in one place. I don't want to talk to people. I don't want to interact. I don't want to engage for fear that something might come up and they might say something and I might be triggered and then I'm gonna have to go ape shit on you. <laughs> Talking about, I just feel like, you know, the Black Lives Matter is like a terrorist group. <laughs> Word. <laughs> that what we're doing this morning? So I have to be mindful of that. But I also know that if I don't push past that anxiety, that person and me may never learn. That we may never have new conversations if we don't push past the exterior and have some real hard and honest conversations about stuff that matters. Anxiety cannot keep us from that. Anxiety is what got us here today. Yeah, did you see the book that came out? Anxiety is what keeps us segregated in 2018 in Charlotte. Anxiety is when people are like, I didn't even know that went on over here or there, or that was even a thing. It prevents us from knowing each other. 
My race creates anxiety not because I'm uncomfortable with who I am, because I'm afraid that other people are uncomfortable with who I am. The fourth thing that creates anxiety in my life is I have a tendency to do stuff that scares the snot out of me. I straddle the line between like, be safe, buckle up, and like, let's go jump out of an airplane. <laughs> and the anxiety that builds towards those issue situations that I put myself in purposely is scary. The, the reality is I used to not do anything I knew I could not win. That was my mantra in life. I'm like, well, if I can't win and I can't excel, I will not do it because who likes failure? <laughs> and then I like grew up and I turned like 22. So. <laughs> I realize, you know, growth starts outside of your comfort zone, so I start doing stuff that scares me, right? It scares the snot out of me. I have gone skydiving. I ran the Warrior Dash. I did the Spartan race. Never again. <laughs> right, like, I don't know what I was thinking. I was scared during, after, before, never doing it. The fat cells in my body are like, yes, we won. <laughs> But I look for new ways to push myself. So eight days ago, I indeed was in the Amazon. And I decided to take a hike through the Amazon. Yo, this is new meaning to Psalm 23. I'm totally getting it tattooed on my body after this. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Because this right here is insane. I did it for the culture. <laughs> That's, here I am, able-bodied. You know, I go to spin class, I go to flywheel. I can hike through the Amazon, right? Where there are anacondas, piranhas, tarantulas. Pretty much anything that ends in A, scary, lives there. And I decided to trek through the Amazon with a guide in front of me, Javier, armed only with a machete. <laughs> While I had like bug spray and like, I was like, ah! <laughs> die wilderness. They're like, these are protected species. I'm like, not anymore. <laughs> but the anxiety of pushing myself and thinking parts of it, I'm not gonna make it. They're gonna have to send a helicopter or something to get me. If I make it to the top, I'm definitely not getting back down. I am sweating in places I don't know. I don't even look cute. Like, I think there's a tarantula in my hat, but I'm afraid to take it off. And then I realize it's not a tarantula, it's really my dreadlocks. Like, <laughs> but when I was done, I had a sense of fulfillment like no other. Like a child, right? You can go ahead to that next slide. And I felt like I had actually accomplished some things. I had actually conquered the anxiety, conquered the fear, and did something that made me feel alive. Alive. Because anxiety will do that too, right? Here are the things I want you to take away this morning at Creative Mornings, which is a dope environment. Like, the energy in here is legit. I'm like, these people are so cool. Why aren't we friends? <laughs> Why don't we hang out more? I should, like, like, Steve has never invited me, so we'll talk about that in our relationship later. I thought we were friends, but clearly we're not. But here are the things this morning that I want you to take as you dig deep, as you sense the anxiety, as you look at the things that give you anxiety. The first thing is I need you to let go. Let go to quell the voice. Let go to quell the voice. You can't do it all. Like they say, you can't please everyone. You're not Nutella. <laughs> <laughs> but anxiety is that voice inside of you telling you cannot, they will not, it is unacceptable. But if you let go and be like, you know what, little voice, I'm backing up and moving away from you, the voice will be quelled. Because we feed the voice, we feed the troll inside of us, that is when anxiety rises to the top. But if we let go, maybe say what will be will be, we will quell that voice. You cannot feed something that you are starving. Think about it. Starve anxiety. Do not feed into it. Do not give into it. Do not even give it away to others. Step away. Let go. Quell the voice. The second thing that I want you to do is recognize and redirect. 
Recognize when you actually have anxiety in your life and name it for what it is. Some of you be like, oh, I'm just stressed out, like, oh no. Some of you be like, oh, I'm just having a bad day. I have the case of the Mondays. Recognize that this is anxiety. Recognize what the trigger point is and redirect in that. Redirect in the anxiety because here's the one gift that anxiety actually gives us. Anxiety reminds us that we are human and we are alive and we are feeling. And for good or for bad, the feelings will trigger others, trigger ourselves, guide our moon, guide our stars, guide what we are doing in life. So recognize it and redirect that energy into something else, into being creative, into being authentic, into being great. Write about it, blog about it, sculpt about it, sing about it, dance about it. Recognize anxiety in your life for what it is and redirect it somewhere else. I make it sound like it's so damn easy. It's not. I just showed you the four places of anxiety, and yes, I'm still single. <laughs> but if I recognize what my triggers are, I can actively work on making it better and changing it and embracing it and embracing whatever the universe wants to throw my way. The third thing, the third thing that I want you to take away is do your best. Anxiety does not want you to do your best. Anxiety will make you run away from the best possible you. Anxiety will want the worst for you. But if you attack every situation, every challenge, every encounter with the level of, I'm going to do my very best. I'm going to give it 110%. I will show up as my authentic self. I will give whatever light that I am receiving, and if I'm not receiving any light, I'm gonna give it anyway. But if you do your best, you can never be angry that anxiety won, right? I gave it everything I got, and if it didn't work out, it didn't work out, and that's okay. I am still worthy, I am still creative, I am still authentic, and yeah, I'm still lovable too. So it is important that as I close up this morning, that the one thing you take away is that anxiety, whether friend or foe, whether you do these three things or not, remember human beings. It doesn't have to control who you are. It doesn't have to define who you are. And once you recognize what it is, go above. Go above, transcend, and keep being the most amazing person that you want to be. Thank you so much for having me this morning. This has been really amazing. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Michelle Gabadi, everybody! Was told about this speech a day ago and wrote a speech about anxiety and just delivered it to you without notes. Thank you, Michelle. Crazy, crazy. Now listen, we're about to sing, one, we're gonna close it out with a quick song for her. So we're singing a song for her and in honor of Liberty DeVito. And as Rebel Wood sets up, here's what I'm gonna say. Number one, you can hear us talk to Michelle on the Charlotte's Creative Podcast. So check that out on iTunes. Our next up is gonna be uh, on February 2nd. We're not sure where yet, could be here, could be Warehouse 242, we don't know. But February 2nd, and the speaker is playing for others. And I'm gonna tell you no more than that, but it's gonna be incredible, I can assure you of that. Um, I want to thank the Creative Mornings planning team. They're incredible. I love you guys. So generous.